The concept of luxury in the category of watches are always going to be inextricably linked, as owning a watch in our technologically charged world is exactly that. It's a luxury. But as we know, there is a hierarchy of how we look at certain watches and brands specifically. This hierarchy, quite frankly, is usually subjective, but what I wanted to do with this video is identify some of the key elements of what makes a watch luxurious and what makes some more so than others. A few things before we begin. First, is this a slightly arbitrary idea? Well, yes. However, I personally think it is reasonably worthwhile to pursue better understanding our consumer behavior, and I find this to be a pretty interesting subject. Secondly, let me be clear. To own any watch from a Casio to a Grupo Forzi is a luxury nowadays. Money doesn't grow on trees, and in no way do I want this video to come off as a demeaning subject in any way. And finally, this idea of luxury is very much relative to both the individual as well as the category of product that we are talking about and analyzing. And watches are inherently more expensive compared to other product categories. And apart from being fascinated by this subject as a business owner in the watch industry, Adrian Barker also released a video earlier this year addressing this topic, which I'd recommend checking out. I can link to it in the description, as I liked how I was able to create a conversation around this pretty loaded topic. So I wanted to kind of give my own take on the subject matter. So my main goal for this video is to form and share key characteristics of a luxury watch, in my opinion. But I feel that it is important to first establish what is a luxury good or a luxury watch. Despite there probably being many definitions one could throw out there, let's begin with one that I've used in the past on the channel. An inessential, desirable item which is expensive and or difficult to obtain. Although this perhaps is not complete, it does touch on a couple points that I think are unquestionable characteristics of qualifying a watch as luxury. The concept of being inessential is certainly one as watches are no longer needed goods as a result of the access to accurate timekeeping being democratized by the evolution of technology. Secondly, the concept of being expensive and difficult to obtain, which to me represents two bifurcated ideas, as price being one barrier and the access to obtain being the other. In some instances, price alone is enough, but the chase to obtain in the world of luxury is certainly a part of the process as well, which we can talk a little bit more about later. As previously mentioned, in order to discuss this, I think we need to stress how the concept of luxury is very much relative to the product category. As an example, a full metal Casio G-Shock and the Casio configuration retails just south of $600. No question, a big chunk of change. Yet relatively speaking for the watch category, far from the typical price range that is associated with luxury. That said, if you took the same amount of money and moved it over to the world of sneakers as an example, you could be looking at some Alexander McQueen's, Off-White, Gucci, Hermes, and other brands many consider as luxury in that product segment. But with this idea of luxury fluctuating by product category, what specifically makes a watch more luxurious? To answer this question, I tried to really focus in on attributes I and others might associate with the term. In my internal and opinionated thought process, and I want to stress the idea of this being opinionated to some degree, I came up with four major points of criteria. And please note that I feel that a watch does not necessarily have to hit all of these categories in order to be considered luxurious. But the more of these points they can effectively hit compared to the competition will help in placing them higher within the luxury hierarchy. For the first attribute, we have build quality. This one is probably self-explanatory, and it's how well is a watch constructed relative to the price category. When looking at build construction and finishing in watches, I think instead of trying to quantify precisely, I would just keep in mind the theme of doing more when more is not necessary. How much does the watch go the extra mile compared to the competition in its price range? Case and bracelet finishing, the movement finish, hand finish components when it's possible, and especially when those efforts that are unlikely to be noticed. As an example, perlage finish on the reverse side of a base plate where only the watchmaker will know during servicing. For point two, we have exclusivity. Now, exclusivity to me has two components, one being the price and the other being the supply to demand ratio. Now, the barrier to entry by price is the obvious point. But if the demand of the watches far exceeds the potential output of production, this adds an additional layer to the level of exclusivity that will require increased wait times and even application forms to get these products. As an example in the automotive industry, think of Ferrari. Although I'm not personally a fan of the games associated with acquiring products, especially ones that are mass produced, there are certainly 
instances of this where it does make more sense when you have brands that simply don't produce that many watches. Think of a brand like FP Journe that produces less than a thousand watches per year, or with a brand such as Roger Smith, where having the opportunity to buy one is extremely exclusive. The third point is brand perception. Despite it not being the reason for my interest in fine watchmaking, there is no question certain luxury watches are able to give a sense of superiority for some given the brand perception in the marketplace. Perhaps the best example of this is Rolex. Even those with moderate levels of interest in watch collecting understand Rolex does not make the most expensive or luxurious of watches. Yet the brand gets an unquestionable boost as a result of the level of awareness and admiration that has transcended the category altogether and allowed them to be recognized by even those who have no knowledge of watchmaking. If some random person on the street asks, what type of watch are you wearing? And you respond, Rolex, they are going to be familiar with the name, something very few brands can say. And for the final point of criteria, I thought this was a necessary one as a result of thinking of those instances where a luxury watch collector might still want some watches to wear that are less expensive than some other ones that they own. And for that, I have uniqueness and having no worthy alternative. There is a concept in economics known as an inferior good. What this describes is the relative scale of desire or quality of goods based on the individual and how one product can become less desirable as the income for that person goes up and access to more exclusive products becomes possible. With this being a reality, what makes certain watches remain intriguing despite the increase in access, in my opinion, or at least one of the main reasons, is there's no alternative for that watch. I think of a product like the Louis Erard Elaine Silberstein pieces. Sure, they are not the most expensive watches out there, but they are unquestionably unique and are hard to replace if you do like that concept. As another example, I know collectors who have multi-million dollar collections with watches that cost six figures alone in value, but then they will go grab their Rolex GMT Master II or their Omega Speedmaster. Why? I think a big reason is that they have their own design identity that is iconic and could be claimed as their own with not having a great alternative if you are looking elsewhere. So to recap here, we have four different points. You have build quality, then you have exclusivity, both price and the supply to demand ratio. Then you have brand perception. And then four, you have uniqueness slash no worthy alternative. Again, this whole process is opinionated and this is not a perfect science as there are certainly more things that go into this. And some of these categories will be more weighted to what the value comes down to for the consumer. The ultimate determining factor is what you like more. If you love it, that is really all that matters at the end of the day. Yet for the sake of this video, I wanted to try to make it less about the romanticized ideas and to really look into the thorough framework for measurement for luxury goods. Now let's just test out this criteria. Let's compare two very different watches to demonstrate. One can be the Rolex Daytona, the 116500LN that retails for $14,550 and trades for around $25,000 to $32,000 at the time of recording this. And then you have the Brigade Tradition 7097 that retails for $33,550 with trading prices around $25,000 to $30,000 at the time of recording this video. So just going through each one of these categories, first you have build quality. Now, just looking at these watches in terms of which one goes the extra mile, I would say Brigade does it more so uh, compared to what maybe a traditional watch uh, enthusiast would like. Then you move into exclusivity. When you factor in trading prices for Daytonas and just the mystique around the brand at the moment, I would say the exclusivity point goes to Rolex just because of that. Brigade does have the exclusivity point on price, but with the trading values of the Daytona and its name in pop culture becoming more relevant, I think that allows the exclusivity point to go to Rolex. Brand perception, for those in the know, of course, Breguet is one of the most acclaimed names of all time, Abraham Louis Breguet. His developments in the world of watchmaking are unprecedented. But then you have Rolex. When you're talking about the modern marketplace, the vast marketplace that it is, I think more people are going to know Rolex. So that has more cachet in the modern market. Then you have uniqueness. I would say Breguet wins here. It's a little bit more different and out there, but if you want the luxury uh, aspect and elevated feel that comes with the Daytona, you probably are going to want to just hold out and try to get the Daytona with all your might. So these are two very extreme examples. And on paper, I would say the Breguet goes the extra mile and should win uh, in most instances when you're just talking about the level of watchmaking. But when understanding luxury goods, 
it's not very black and white. And you have to almost look at the whole picture of why somebody would even buy a luxury goods. So for people that care about brand perception and this idea of exclusivity, that's why so many people go for the Daytona. And I think this is almost an exercise of human behavior and what we value for certain people out there when they are choosing to make these types of purchases. If it came down to what is the better watch, our market of watchmaking would look very different right now compared to what it is. But this whole concept of luxury is a perplexing one. And in our increasingly consumer-driven society that is all about being conspicuous with our consumption of goods, I do think this is an interesting conversation to have. So what is your take on luxury? What do you think makes a watch more luxurious? Are there brands that you would say a cutoff happens? Like what is luxury versus not luxury? And how would you just try to think about this idea? It's interesting because I do think we throw around the word luxury so often that we almost forget what actually constitutes luxury. So I'd love to hear your take down below. If you enjoyed this video and this discussion, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I know there hopefully will be some comments uh, down below, just kind of giving some more of an elevated type of response here. And so we can just all have a dialogue. You know, feel free to jump in the comment section. Also definitely check out teddybaldesar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. All these products are curated as well by myself. So anything you see on the site, something that I've looked at, I think is a solid product for the money and where it represents. So it's a great place to just shop, learn, and do everything you need to do. And also any purchase also helps out the channel. We are all self-funded here. All the content that we create is not being sponsored by the brands. All is being done through the sales of watches on our site. So if you wanna support the content, that's the best way to do so. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.